Hi, my name is Virginia Young. I'm the Health Sciences Librarian here at Lemoyne, and this tutorial will give you some advanced search tips, including evidence-based search tips, to find literature for your DNP project. Before we jump into a demonstration of searching with MeSH in PubMed, here's a quick overview of the difference between searching with keywords as opposed to subject headings. Keywords search only and exactly what you type in. That's how a search works in Google. Subject headings are assigned by experts and expand your results because subject headings are not necessarily attached to an exact keyword and you might have better results and expanded results if you take advantage of subject headings. PICO is the acronym used in evidence-based practice to help extract essential terms used in your search strategy. The PICO search we're going to use today is a population of individuals with a heart attack. The intervention would be exercise. No comparison. The prevention is our outcome. You don't have to use all the elements of the PICO. It's just to help you extract essential terms. We're going to try that in MeSH so you can see how MeSH can assist finding keyword alternatives. I'm going to quickly go through the steps to find PubMed and search the MeSH database. On the library homepage, click the databases tab, the P for PubMed, and scroll down to PubMed. It's important to use this link and not directly PubMed.gov because this is the way to see links to our full text holdings. At PubMed.gov, you can immediately search, but let's go to the MeSH database under Explore to see what happens when we type in one of our PICO terms, which is heart attack, and then hit enter. What happens with the medical subject headings is it gives you myocardial infarction for heart attack. So it's translating your keyword to a subject heading. You can see other entry terms. So these are terms when typed in that match to myocardial infarction. And you can also see in the subject heading tree other ideas you might want to use. So rather than MI or heart attack, you might want to go up a few levels and use heart diseases or cardiovascular diseases. You can create a search from here. If you say myocardial infarction and prevention and control, which is the outcome we're looking at, you can add that to your search builder and search PubMed. That's how you would use subject headings in PubMed to look for some different ideas for subject terms. Another way you can access medical subject headings or MeSH is to actually run a search in PubMed and then look at the advanced details for the translation of your search into medical subject headings. I run a search that I think is keywords, but look at what's happening. You see myocardial infarction is actually found in the results. And how can I see what translations PubMed has done? I click advanced and then underneath here, you see details and you can click the details down arrow and it shows you your translations. Heart attack was translated to myocardial infarction mesh and it was also searched as a keyword. So this way you can do both. You can do the heart attack keyword search and the mesh search for myocardial infarction at the same time. It works with prevention as well and also with exercise. One thing you might want to do in mesh, I'm going to go back to PubMed in advanced Actually, I'm going to go back to MeSH. I just want to show you how you might get ideas for something like exercise in PubMed. When you search MeSH and you look at exercise, you can get other ideas for what you might want to use. And scrolling down to the table, you might want to specifically look at something like running or walking. So this is how the subject heading tree could give you ideas as far as other terms to use in your search. As you structure your search strategy, keep in mind that AND is typically the default and you don't need to type it in. Also, AND combines two words and the results must have both of those words. So you're going to see fewer results when you use AND. So I would use it for different concepts. In the diagram here, you'll see 
exercise and heart attack and the grade area is actually the results you will get back because that set is the articles that have both words exercise and heart attack now for the connector or that's typically used with synonyms so that you can see in the diagram myocardial infarction or heart attack i want either or however what you'll notice is that you receive many more results back and the grade area is all of those results that you'll get back because you're going to have terms either or. If we go back to our PubMed search for heart attack prevention exercise where we didn't type any of the connecting words in, you see that it has been translated with connectors. The synonyms are connected with or. Different concepts are connected with and. It does take a while to read through this actual search strategy to see how it works, but you'll see in the translations that heart attack translated to myocardial infarction mesh is searched with or with the other keywords. In the CINAHL database, there are search fields that you can use to structure your search with connectors. For my synonyms, I connected with or. Then I chose and from the drop down to connect to the new concept, which is exercise. You'll see in the search history, the synonyms that are connected by or have parentheses around them. Then and exercise is added on so that the synonyms are searched separately. Then they are connected to the term exercise with and. Here are some additional tips for effective searching. Searching often takes several tries to really hone in on the articles that you would like to use for your paper. You will discover new keywords, synonyms, and subject headings that may look to be more accurate for your topic, and you can try those again. So typically it's not one search and you're done. There's a lot of different tries. You can use the similar articles option in PubMed and other databases have this as well, where a new search is run that finds the closest match to the abstract that you have open. It will try to find those articles that are closest. You can also look at the references that are cited in articles that you like. So often you can follow a trail and see what did they cite? Are there any studies that you might like to use as well? PubMed has a cited by feature and Google Scholar has this as well where you can find more recent articles that maybe have cited the one that you like and often that's another way to find more recent studies that are similar to the one you like. Review articles are not original research but they do cite original research so if you find a review article that's right on point for your topic often you can use their references to find original studies that might be appropriate for citing in your paper. Additional features of biomedical databases that help you with your searching include limits and evidence-based filters. Limits can be pretty simple, just limiting by publication year, English language, or perhaps there's a certain age group you're interested in. Evidence-based practice limits are a little bit more advanced because they can focus your results on higher levels of evidence such as randomized controlled trials or systematic reviews. Let's take a look at how evidence-based filters can reduce the number of results very quickly to those of a high level of evidence. You'll see that we have over 2,000 results for our search of heart attack prevention exercise. So if you scroll down over on the left, you can see where the filters are. A few of the filters that we talked about were a date restriction that you can um, change it by dragging along the line to make the um, maybe the past 10 years or 20 years and then you'll see that the uh, filter is automatically happening and now we're down to 1500 results in the past 20 years the evidence-based filters show under article type and recommended filters would be randomized control trials so that you're only looking at a result list of randomized control trials. So if I click that filter, I went from over 1,500 results to 140. Another evidence-based filter result that will give, bring you to the gold standard of evidence-based practice, which is systematic reviews, is under article type as well. So you would click systematic review and let's see how many systematic reviews 
in the past 20 years on our search. We're down to 54. So what that does is it brings your results quickly down and you know you can be confident that the results are a high level of evidence and you're not spending extra time looking through uh, maybe clinical trials that would not be worth using for your study. Let's take a look in CINAHL how evidence-based filters can be applied to reduce your result list. Here's our search results over 3,000 for heart attack or myocardial infarction and exercise. So similarly to PubMed, you will find filters and limits over on the left side in this column. It's describing your search and then it's also giving you some filters to use. Uh, what you can do here again is drag over to reduce your um, number of years in the results. So let's do 20 years again like we did with PubMed. We still have over 2,000, so then let's use our evidence-based filters to reduce the number of results. The other recommendation I would have is to use a peer-reviewed filter. I don't see the peer-reviewed filter here, so what I do is say, show more. This will show you more types of limits and filters. Here in my show more screen, I am going to scroll down and make sure I have the peer-reviewed filter checked. And then what I can do is I can look at publication type, again, similarly to PubMed, and find the publication type that would match my interest. There are systematic reviews in here. If you scroll down, they're in alphabetical order. So let's scroll down. And you can select systematic review here. And then to apply the filter, you click the search after you select systematic review. We're down to 60 systematic reviews. The other filter that you could use that I showed also in PubMed, if you want over here to remove a filter, you can just click the X next to systematic review. Let's look now for the filter for uh, randomized control trials. So again, I don't really see it here, so let me click show more, scroll down. And the interesting thing about CINAHL is instead of under publication type, you can actually click randomized control trials here in the other area of the filters. Another nice thing to look at when you're in CINAHL is whether or not you absolutely want one of the authors to be a nurse. And you can make that selection here in the filters as well. And there are other choices for filters uh, in this box. And then you click search to apply your filter. So right now we're applying the randomized control fil trial filter and we are down to 100. Uh, randomized controlled trials. So really it's up to you how many you want to review, uh, but it's really essential to use that peer-reviewed filter in CINAHL, and then you can use the publication type filter to bring down your results to a more manageable level for review and also to a reliable standard of evidence. This slide lists other databases where you can try your subject terms and keywords. Google Scholar does have an option to change your library links, search Lemoyne, and add the links to full text articles that you find in Google Scholar. Please contact me with any questions on your research with the information you see here. You can also, if I'm not available, use the Ask Us feature on our library website to talk to or chat, email, and immediately get a response from a librarian. Thank you.